Welcome to Barron's Biotech Breakdown, where I give you the latest monthly updates on the coolest biotech happening, in my opinion. My top three picks for this month. Primate with type 1 diabetes becomes insulin independent by receiving gene edited cells from the pancreas of a donor. The first clinical trial for cell therapy against aggressive brain cancer extends the life of patients. An AI assisted wearable patch that can be worn and help people to speak who do not have functional vocal cords. So my name's Sarah Barron and I have a PhD in engineering and biotechnology from the University of Cambridge and I'm on a mission to bring the latest and coolest biotech research updates to the general public. So let's break down these research articles. A primate with type 1 diabetes becomes insulin independent when receiving gene edited cells from the pancreas of a donor. So that's a lot of words. Let's break it down. First of all, what is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition, which means the immune cells in our body mistakenly attack the pancreas. And the specialized cells within the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. And they're so called this because they look like little islands or little clusters. And Langerhans is named after the scientist who discovered them. These cells have a very specific function, which is to secrete the hormone insulin. And among other things, insulin is really, really important for regulating our blood sugar levels. In a healthy person, we don't generally have to think about this. However, in a person with type 1 diabetes, they are unable to produce the hormone insulin, meaning that these blood sugar levels can vary wildly. Our brain, our muscles, our organs, everything in our body needs energy, it needs sugar. And if our blood sugar level gets very low, we can start to feel things like dizziness, confusion, disorientation. One can go into a coma and it can even be fatal. If our blood sugar gets too high, then we can start to feel dizziness, sickness, needing to urinate a lot, being really thirsty. If you continuously have high blood sugar, this can lead to things like nerve damage and in extreme cases, amputation of the extremities such as fingers and toes. There are currently no cures for type 1 diabetes, but there are some technologies that can help manage the symptoms. These consist of monitoring your blood glucose levels and injecting insulin. Monitoring your blood glucose can be done by either doing a finger prick test, having a wearable sensor, and it's continuously updating and monitoring your blood sugar. The second part is injecting the insulin, either with a pen or a pump that is permanently attached. One up and coming bioengineered solution that many people have maybe heard of in the news is stem cell therapy. A stem cell is a cell that has the potential to change or develop into any cell in your body. One thing with stem cell therapy as a negative is that people have to receive lifelong immunosuppression, meaning that your immune system is chronically suppressed. And if you do get a virus or an illness, your body can no longer fight that. So stem cell therapy is not perfect yet. What else is there? And that is where this study comes in. Primates are 99% genetically similar to humans. So to mimic how the disease and the treatment would actually occur in humans, scientists chose to use a primate with type 1 diabetes, meaning the islets of Langerhans cells are destroyed and they can no longer produce insulin for themselves. We then have another primate who is within the same species but slightly distinct and this is a really good example of how there is genetic variation within the human population. We can isolate or take the cells from the pancreas of the donor and we genetically engineer them using a technique called CRISPR. And no, these are not chips that you can eat. CRISPR stands for clustered regularly interspaced palindromic repeats. So what does that mean? Let's break it down. CRISPRs are short DNA sequences found in small organisms like bacteria. Now bacteria don't have an immune system in the same way that we do. And they use these tiny short fragments of DNA to very specifically attack and kill any viruses or diseases that they come into contact with. 
by attaching guiding molecules and enzymes which can break down or activate things, we can then switch on or switch off genes. And so for genetic disorders or autoimmune disorders, CRISPR can be very useful. So in this case, CRISPR technology can be used to deactivate the part of the cell which is recognized by our immune system. Thus, the donor cells injected into the primate with type 1 diabetes can evade or hide from our immune system and go unrecognized while carrying out its function quite happily. Two weeks after receiving these gene edited cells, the first primate with type 1 diabetes no longer needed insulin injections to regulate their blood glucose levels. And for a period of up to six months, their blood glucose levels were in the optimal range. The only side effect was a slight increase in body weight, but markers of inflammation, cell death, and any sign of the immune system attacking these engineered cells was completely kept to a minimum. This is huge because this is the first time really this technology has been used as a curative mechanism. And the first clinical trial is set to go ahead at the end of this year. And if successful in the first human patient, then this could be rolled out to other people with type 1 diabetes. Coming back to the second headline, which was the first clinical trial for cell therapy against aggressive brain cancer extends life of patients. The name for this type of brain cancer is glioblastoma. And then the first part of the word stems from the cell type which is responsible for the cancer. Breaking this down, in the brain, there are two types broadly of cells. We have one cell type, which are the nerves or the neurons, which are responsible for communication between different cells. The second type of cell is a glial cell, and this is responsible for many supporting functions. So structural support for nerve cells, also things like taking out the trash, taking out excess metabolites. This is one of the most, if not the most, aggressive forms of brain cancer. Current standard of care practices such as chemotherapy, radiotherapy, are just not up to scratch and not specific enough. In this study, they used a new cell therapy called CAR-T cell therapy, chimeric antigen receptor T cell. So let's break this down. The T cell is a type of immune cell in your body. It circulates around your bloodstream and its job is to detect viruses, pathogens, and basically anything that's gonna harm you. It attacks them and destroys them by recognizing a very specific protein. However, in cancer, this immune cell can struggle to detect cancer from a normal cell. The cancer almost hides from the immune system. And what CAR-T cell therapy does is it takes a specific protein which another word for this is a receptor. And we can engineer a cell to express this specific receptor for cancer. And so now this T cell is able to distinguish cancer cell from a healthy cell within our body. The neat thing about this technology is we take immune cells, these T cells, from ourselves. If the cells are coming from our own body originally, we're not gonna have any rejection to this because they're our own cells. In this study, patients were recruited that unfortunately had had a reoccurrence of this brain tumor for two times or more. So this was pretty much their last option and they had tried every kind of therapy that was available. Doctors would take some immune cells, these T cells, from the patient. They would engineer them in the lab to express this protein specific to the brain cancer. They would populate these in the lab so that they had enough cells to last through the treatment therapy. They would re-inject the cells into the patient. So because this study had never been done before, there were two main objectives. One is to study its overall safety, of course. And number two was to check for the result and overall survival of the patients. Three routes of administration were tried. The first was admission straight into the tumour itself. The second was administration of cells into the cerebral spinal fluid, which is the fluid that bathes your spinal cord and your brain third option was combining the two. The study was the largest clinical trial for this type of brain cancer and this type of cell treatment. And out of the 56 patients that were enrolled throughout the duration of the study, the major side effects reported were fatigue, headache, and dizziness. One patient did suffer from severe ataxia, 
which means troubles with standing to sitting, falling down and coordination. The patient did also suffer from encephalopathy, which is just a big word for brain injury. Although the side effects in these two patients are very severe, it's worth noting that in the whole population of the study cohort, over half of the patients did see their cancer stop progressing. One of the main findings from this study is the overall survival rate of patients, which was extended five months beyond the standard of care such as chemotherapy. And one patient even has gone five years without his brain cancer coming back. Our third headline of the month is an AI-assisted wearable patch that can be worn and help people to speak who do not have functional vocal cords. Our vocal cords are a collection of muscles that sit in our voice box at the top of our throat and at the back of our tongue. And the vibration of these causes speech and articulation. We don't really think about how speech is integral to pretty much everything in our life. Social connection, articulating our emotions, thoughts. If we can't speak, it can be really detrimental to our quality of life. And there are a variety of reasons why our vocal cords may not work. It can be temporary such as when we have inflammation or infection from growths pressing on our actual cords themselves and these growths can be cancerous or non-cancerous. Some people may even be born without the ability to use their vocal cords or there could be an acute injury. So how does this wearable patch work? Let's break it down. The wearable patch contains three layers. The middle layer contains micro or very small magnets encapsulated in a very thin plastic called PDMS. The second layer is composed of very, very thin copper wire. Finally, the third layer is an entire encapsulation in this very thin plastic. And the whole patch is only 1.5 millimeters thick, which is the thickness of a grain of rice. So how does it work? You've probably heard energy can't be created or destroyed, it's only transferred, and it's the same here. Muscle movement is converted into a change in magnetic field, a change in electrical current, and then can be converted into an output signal via artificial intelligence and mathematical modeling. And it's important for the artificial intelligence model to be trained firstly on healthy people who have uninterrupted speech so that it can get better at recognizing each individual sound. They were trained to say singular words and then increasing in complexity to four sentences. We can then train the artificial intelligence to recognize which movements create which sounds. We can then give the artificial intelligence some new words or new phrases or new movements that it's not seen before and it can learn to interpret what those sounds mean. And during this learning phase the artificial intelligence was 95% accurate in detecting speech from unknown muscle movements. So although this study was in healthy people for a start, the next phases will be to go into patient populations who have diseases or dysfunctions of the vocal cords. That concludes this month's episode of Barron's Biotech Breakdown. I've been Sarah Barron, your host, and I really hope that you've enjoyed learning about biotechnology with me. Please drop any comments in the chat if anything wasn't clear and make sure to check out the description for any links to papers and materials that I've used during this episode. Of course, like and subscribe and I really hope to see you again.